So uh, good, we can formalize in, in yes. Uh, so, good, good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us today uh, for the seminar on uh, thinking out of the box, idea to invention. Uh, I, myself, Satya Sridevi Pogaru, a scientist C at PIC, welcome you all on board uh, on this platform. On behalf of Butch Coast and on behalf of uh, Dr. Narottam Sahu, advisor and member secretary of Butch Coast. Um, as you all know, thinking out of the box is a metaphor. That means think differently, unconventionally, or from a new perspective. Uh, this phrase is often refers to novel and creative thinking. It means coming up with ideas that are unique and have never been proposed before in the situation. And it's not very... Uh, And the famous quote by Albert Einstein <clears throat> goes as, Creativity, creativity is seeing what everyone else has seen and thinking what no one else has thought. This is exactly what makes our expert speaker of the day, Dr. Gordhan Patel, stand out of the crowd. And you know why I'm saying this and you'll find out during his talk. With this, I request Dr. Narutam Sapu, advisor uh, and member secretary of Kuch Post, to formally welcome our guest and introduce the speaker to the audience. Uh, sir, over to you, sir. <coughs> uh, yes, good morning, everybody. In, in fact, uh, today is a very auspicious day in Gujarat, uh, in India, in across the country. Today is the beginning of Navaratri the Lord uh, Durga. So we are privileged to have this program, this session, with uh, such an eminent uh, uh, personality, Dr. Govardhan Patel, who is the man of this land, and who made this land proud, this country, this state, this country proud. So Dr. Govardhan Patel, sir, is currently president of uh, JP Laboratories in USA, and having a uh, lots of uh, innovations, both individual level as well as the entrepreneurship level, and having almost uh, 20 plus research publications, and, and so many invited and very motivating talks, and lots of uh, uh, new and innovations in terms of uh, solicited polymerizations and this uh, material science, chemistry and material science. He has received his MS in physical chemistry and PhD in physical uh, physics from Sardar Patel University and uh, started the career as a postdoctoral fellow at University of uh, Bristol, England and Braille University, Texas prior to JP Laboratory. Uh, we have, in fact, I was wondering that uh, how, how, why we should do so late in contacting Dr. Patel sir to have some sort of association with the Goods Coast and to give his, uh, some sort of uh, advice and guidance from his vast uh, exposure and uh, experiences. So on behalf of uh, uh, Gujarat Council on Science and Technology, Department of Science and Technology, Government of Gujarat, uh, we welcome Dr. Govardhan Patel sir as our eminent guest faculty, guest speaker for this session. And we'd be very happy to learn his uh, words, learn his uh, uh, about his work and experiences and I think uh, as sir has given a title think out of the box which is the buzzword of the time every sector from the grassroots level to our day to day life from a policy making to our all practices every times we need that type of experiences and expertise uh, and gone are the days when you people are asking Whenever there was a job interview, the people are asking about your qualification, your experiences, whether you have a distinction, you have a first class, you are a, something like that, that, that. But right now the entire scenario has been changed. People are asking that how much skill you have, what are the, how much you are prepared to have a problem solving uh, 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 situation or your attitude is like that way. In fact, last uh, six to seven months, this uh, during this uh, corona pandemic times that also gives you a very real life situation whatever you learn whatever we have practiced whatever we have uh, prepared everything is set aside we have to do what we want to do as per the current situation so in this context i think uh, the session the speaker 
the topic is very very relevant and i am very ha happy that uh, we have dr govardhan patel sir on this uh, auspicious day on this very important theme so i once again welcome you sir all our participants all our uh, faculty our uh, uh, um, uh, science communicators coordinators they are keen to listen to you so i once again welcome you and i will uh, I'll, i am very sure that this uh, uh, talk may be a turning point for many of our uh, science educator science uh, uh, communicators and our researcher also so thank you so much and we are looking forward for a very enlightening session with you from you sir thank you sir thank you for introduction thinking out of the box inventions and innovation so why do we need to think outside the box because our thinking outside the box or is all is the same term and be inventive and innovative why do we need to be inventive and innovative and think out of the box here is the plot of sales versus time of a product or service life cycle old days when we were growing up a product would last for decades sometimes and currently the in the uh, current life you know time sometimes the service life of the product is very short for example old phones we some of our still we are using it which was costing around 20 dollar to 50 dollar and it will be used it for almost 30 years or so when a flip cell phone came you know it lasted around 5 years at the most costing 200 dollars or so and currently iphone which barely has a shelf life for 2 years or so and then you always constant improvement and cost quite a bit so life cycle of the products currently are very short and if you do not constantly innovate or improve your product or services it is highly likely they will become obsolete soon that's why we have to be inventive and innovative and constantly improve our products and services now why usa is the world leader and most powerful country in the world there are many reasons such as it is very resourceful rich country law is strongly strictly enforced right policies of the government least corruption and very productive people however one of the most important reasons is that it has created encouraged and supports a culture of and this is important a culture of original pioneering work research and development innovation and entrepreneurship this is what india is getting in now so why again it is leader because it leader in pioneering research since the second world war especially after 1990 80 percent of the Nobel laureates are from United States. Most of innovative companies or technologies started and they are large huge corporations are Google, Apple, etc. So here is the you know Nobel list of no I'm sorry Nobel laureates in different countries and United States so far as of 2019 has created 383 Nobel laureates. What is interesting is this was before 1930 there were very few probably not even one per year Nobel laureates and the most of the Nobel laureates as you can see were in peace but not in science and technology or physics, chemistry and biology. Once the country changed its policy you can see from after around the second world war when it started number of Nobel laureates started increasing and today most of the Nobel laureates are from United States. That is because of the government policies and all that I said earlier. Look at the number of patents filed. In, in, still we are among the top 10 countries, but the number of patents filed is one a tenth of United States and even much lower than the China. And patent issued, we are actually in the 10th. Number of patents issued in India are much lower and that of rest of the world. However, because of the Indian government's policies, the rate of filing patents and IPR is now it is accelerating. 
Indian government has programs just like a global innovation because of those programs global innovation index of India has jumped from 81 in 2015 to uh, from there it has jumped to number 52 30, nearly 30 points up in 2019 number of patent filing from 2013 and 14 to 2018 and 19 has increased by 18 percent that's a huge rate the MO is mainly because of the Indian government has introduced a large number of programs matter of fact and here I have listed a few of them such as Make in India, Startup India, Digital India, Skill India and many such programs which have planted the seed of innovation and economical growth. Gujarat has for example Guj Cost is very supportive and also funding many similar programs. India has huge, highly educated young people, but majority of them lack the knowledge of invention, innovation, intellectual property rights, and entrepreneurship. It is changing now. <clears throat> so let me now explain what is invention, difference between invention, innovation, and the related terms. These are the terms you might have heard, and it requires quite a bit of explanation, but Research, research and research and development, discovery, concept, creativity, imagination, vision, invention, curiosity, pioneering work, knowledge, intelligence, all these words need, oh, and they are related to invention and innovation. All the days we, 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 we can value more the knowledge. Today we, what is more important is intelligence. Means how we process the information or the knowledge rather than knowledge itself. So let me explain some of the related terms to invention and innovation. Research means obviously many of us you know is research we mean searching for something new or knowledge usually not known as for example we do for our PhD thesis or MS thesis. Research and development usually done in industry where we improve the products. This is typically done in industry and then usually done by research and development departments. Discovery is to uncover, find something not known before, usually already existing in nature, for example, electrons, minerals, or those Buddhist you know, caves in Maharashtra, dinosaur bones. <coughs> Invention and innovation. Invention, a man made a new device or process which did not exist, that is called invention. As we say, hey, we will was the first most important invention of human being and came and this, uh, invented it. But innovation is a better way of doing the same thing or things which has utility. Will alone has no, it is an invention, but it has no utility I mean, unless and you, until you use it, it cannot be considered as innovation. Once you use the will, maybe, you know, here, then it is considered innovation. So innovation is invention plus commercialization. Invention is typically one item. And it is typically invention alone cannot be usually not used because just having will, where do you use it? When you use it, it is considered innovation. So innovation uses a number of invention. For example, in car there will be thousands and thousands of different innovations would be used and it requires a lot of knowledge. Now innovation starts with fresh novel idea and the novelty is the prime that one has to have completely new and novel idea. Let me give you an example that I, I um, know about and one, you know, poor one working on it that I've been working on compounds called diacetylene, they are colorless, and when you radiate them, they develop color. So the way I got the idea that using this known phenomena, I can develop a radiation dosimeter card. So that is an idea. But it is neither invention nor innovation. When I reduce to practice, then it becomes invention. So when I made a prototype device where they, from that compound I made a little sensor, printed color reference bar, created a kind of card, then it becomes the invention. 
and it requires a lot of technical skills, knowledge of you know how to make the card and walk, printing and making the sensor. So it requires a lot of technical skills. And when we solve many problems and when we start manufacturing and marketing, then it becomes innovation. So it, innovation requires manufacturing and marketing, and it requires a lot of capital and entrepreneurship. So what I explained to you that this is an idea that is an that is idea means I can develop a something from these color changing compounds. When I make a prototype, that becomes invention. When I develop a product and manufacture and market, that becomes innovation. So it, it is relatively easy, though not simple, but it is relatively easy compared to innovation, and it is usually controlled. But I make that card. So the card, you know, this invention and innovation are usually high risk, high reward type of process. It requires, if it is completely new technology, <coughs> excuse me, it requires a millions of dollars, not necessary for all product, but when it is entirely new, it requires a millions of dollars experience manpower and takes years to develop an entirely new product or technology. Nika. Hello? Okay. It takes nine months from conception. Everybody knows that to, to, to deliver a baby, human baby, it takes nine months. You can count that baby would be delivered in about nine months. And when baby is born and, you know, it becomes adult around 30 years of age and start to become productive in the society. That is, you can, <laughs> but when it comes to invention and innovation, it can take, it can happen in nine days or it can take 90 months for any length to reduce from conception to practice or invention and it may not even occur. Only a small number of inventions become innovations and a tiny fractions of innovation make money and when they make money they make lots of money so in innovation is very expensive very lengthy sometimes unpredictable and very risky how do i start you know an innovative project let me give you an example which i have been working on so when i when i get an idea this is typically way i work and i have been working on innovation and invention and research for my entire professional life so when i get an idea i don't start the project right away i do an extensive literature search and a due diligence and continue doing so for a long time i explore several concepts as well as different materials and methods that can be used for my, my idea. I then select a better idea for further exploration. I keep my mind fairly open to change anything to at any time as needed. I don't, don't have that rigidity in my innovation process. Now I'm going to do two points which are very important in this one. One is literature search and due diligence. Importance of literature search and due diligence. <laughs> so due diligence is a very complex process but very useful and it's, everybody should do it. When you take an action in life or develop <laughs> or anything. Hello, there is some interference. Anyway, so when you take action A, action B or C to develop a product or in any process of our life, there could be effect of, can many effects, effect of or many parameters can be varied. Results could be in very A, B, C and there may be very many alternatives to all this. And sometimes unexpected events occurs and you have to keep on doing this process to and forth because one affects the other. So due diligence, due diligence is very essential. So in fact, now let me describe you the impact of literature search and due diligence in starting a project on developing an environmental friendly, biodegradable, disposable cutlery and tableware. A decade ago, I got an idea that I could do, I can develop such a product. 
and it is objective the objective was to replace those made from plastics to reduce pollution when i did the search and constant due diligence then i found that hey, in nature this thing exists you know pots earthen pots and cups and bowls are made from earthen pots but they are heavy thick fragile and relatively expensive then further search revealed that edible disposable biodegradable cutlery and tableware are in the market and also all kind of those things are available somebody speaker is on okay you don't mind turning it off okay my so my evaluation revealed that though it is available they are usually thick heavy too much wastage of food grains to make all those thick uh, disposable cutlery and they are relatively ex- expensive and voluminous then here sir, there are also paper p- p- plates made from banana leaves from path these leaves and all that are available paper plates are also available and also those made from wood spoons and forks are available then i thought what should i do you know the, we are as i was going further in my due diligence you know the particle boards were made from sawdust and so if they can make particle board from sawdust with the polymer bind as a binder then i thought if there is a all the straw and hay and you know the stalks which are burned or just back to ground if it is milled into very fine powder and if i put binder in it i could make a very thin plates and cutlery and tableware when i did the search unbelievable it was somebody in japan and china has already made this from the, the dust or milled powder of uh, grain and all other things you know stock so then that also fell apart and i wanted to make how you these are again very thick so my objective was to how do i make paper this cutlery and tableware as thin as paper plate and we have now come, we are coming pretty close to the solution that we have special binder which is also a food which can be you know mixed with this powder and can be made very thin very strong plates which can meet the basically same properties as paper plates and even also it is possible to make foam foam you know containers so it hopefully we can start this process soon or develop this product soon but anybody in india can also do it so it would also reduce a lot of burning and pollution and because these materials would degrade so fast so this is the way i would do and work throughout my professional life in developing new products now let me explain to you about the discovery and innovations or inventions do not need to be don't need to be sorry discoveries and invention do not need a real life utility however when it comes to innovation it has to have real life utility because one has to make money from the innovation this person thinks he has invented some a design where it can save water or collect water obviously who who would buy it so invention must have a real life utility need demand and marketability if it is not your invention remains invention doesn't become innovation this person thinks he has invented a game where tennis and basketball are combined but how many would purchase and play least likely anybody would so innovation and invention must have market is must be marketable and also must be profitable now coming to the main topic thinking out of the box here are many of you would know hey, they they ask you to connect all these dots in a box or in a square without a lifting pen or going again over the same line normal it is practical it is impossible however if you learn to think out of the box you can do it as you show you shown here you don't have to limit yourself to the same you can connect here and go around and you can on the can join all the spot without going over the same line same thing with, with these 16 spots 
you can go around and as long as you think out of the box don't restrict yourself to this nine or 16 dots or sometimes you have to go way out of it you have to create you know your right of, out of the box to tic tac toe so out of box thinking is very essential to solve many problems so what is thinking we, we think every time with that or constantly but we never think what is thinking so thinking out of the box is even more difficult so let me explain to you what is thinking out of the box and you may think what is this and obviously it is a box and I tell you it is also not a box so this is the same box when you open it there are packages of cereals you can see you know half a filled with the seed packages of cereal and if you want to ship this one by the way it is very strong cardboard uh, box if you have to ship this cereal you know how would you ship it you have to fill up this space half empty space typical typical way of filling it is to fill with the packing material that's where Walter does it but you have to think when you are asked to think out of the box how would you fill this empty space before you ship it so let me show you how I do it so this is a box with the cereals and you can see I put one pillow then I put second pillow third pillow and fourth pillow now that's an unconventional way of of filling the space and then I close it so now I can ship it the box would be pretty safe now I tell you this is not a box for me it is my suitcase when I come to India I never come with a suitcase I always use this box and you can see this label on my suitcase or box and it says my name Gordon Bai and they have removed my eye and last year when I came on March 14th and from Ahmedabad so it is and when I come there they always open my box because they say hey what is this and they write that they have opened my box to check what is inside so what you see for you it is a box for me it is a suitcase a suitcase costs 70 to 80 dollars while my box cost me 8 dollars and that is I going and coming and I, I bring the same box back so and it is so strong that I can sit on it so when I made it early this year I was there as well on this in December and early this year that's every time I come I use my box and I don't carry suitcase so for you it's a box for me it's a suitcase for you these pillows are packing material for me and it is pillow normally so it is it's a how you can do it and I I use the pillow when I'm there and when I come back if I need I you bring one or two pillow back otherwise I leave them behind and it can be used rather than packing material which is thrown and polluted so now you know what is called thinking out of the box you have to think differently so learn to think out of the box it is essential for invention and innovation now what are the blockers and barriers to the invention and innovation they are resistant to change and the very this is also, this list is very long but they are the real blockers and how to prevent them blocking in invention and innovation inertia I can't do it I need help you know I'm used to this way that's another problem negative attitude take familiar path you know do not explore bit other ways better ways afraid of failures not taking risk play in a safe environment comfortable zone that's our weakness and also lack of motivation confidence proper direction collaboration diversity and very broad experience required recognition and lack of internal heroes culture another one is culture and mentality of mindset I have good business that this is one of the things hurts us very much that I have a good business or I have a good job why do, do I want to take trouble I'm making a lot of money or I'm, it is safe for me to retire so I'm happy don't want to take risk 
we have been making or if it is business person if you are some of these that's a big problem that we have less, less innovation that hey i've been making and manufacturing this product for years customers are happy why do i want to take trouble and invite pain those are the blockers in addition it is the blockers are unaware of development innovation around the world employees do not are not empowered to innovate no innovative strategy government or institute does not have those strategies that centralize one function and many more those are the blockers the biggest one of these biggest blocker is called status quo and let me tell you what is status quo before i go to there the first step in in this uh, innovation and invention is to find the most important thing it to learn, you know is first and the most important thing is to learn to think out of the box and that's what the theme of this presentation is and one has to learn to think out of the box and that is the most important thing so to think out of the box one has to get out of the sphere we are in by sphere i don't mean physical sphere but we have this is where i can do this is i cannot do all those blockers we have so that is we we have to get out from from the sphere we are in and we have to crack that sphere so unless and until we crack that sphere would remain in the sphere we would never able to invent or innovate and these all that those blockers have listed many more of these so the way to do is think ask question see the same thing differently find answer and solution and take risk that's a, those are the initial steps one has to take and obviously the part is the think out of the box is the critical part let me ask you this one what do you think is, is there anything wrong with these shocks anything wrong with this glove anything wrong with this undershirt this is just an large portion here there is nothing wrong and still there it is wrong you see this shock there is nothing wrong that's why whole world wears it, wears it but there is an unconventional and better way of wearing a shock or shocks this is the way we supposed to wear it inside out you, if you do this wear this way you may not recognize because we been doing for our lives that your skin gets hurt by this you know and if you wear this way if the leather or shoe or dead animal skin gets hurt who cares for we care for our skin but typically we wear only this way and never this way not inside out glove the same way we wear this way but we supposed to wear this way if you wear this way it would not hurt your skin if you are handling hammer or something the handle would get hurt who cares for it same thing you know here is each is you know if you wear inside out that would be a better way to wear it and believe me that's way i wear it you can see my shoe shocks you know and people say hey you are you have worn your shocks inside out and i show them they have my undershirt is also inside out i've been doing this for 15 20 years by this time however if you wear a shirt inside out that is going a little out of too far and that it should not be done if you wear pant inside out it would really go it would be extremely bad <coughs> excuse me so one need to be creative innovative but realistic you cannot wear a shirt and pants inside out and if you wear it somebody can pick your pocket and you can see a scissor here and note the point very sharp of scissors have very sharp points all variety of scissors been invented different size shape handles and all that been been invented over the years and here are few more versions of them but note that these all scissors have very sharp point because of that one these guys said hey i can have this foldable scissor so you can carry in the pocket but look at this scissor which i have one at my home it is so you know i never get cut any punctured at any time no matter what i'm doing cutting or push even in my hand other hand it still would not cut 
it's a simple innovation the end is and still it cuts very sharp because when these two tips meet they still as sharp as the other one so sometimes innovation is very simple improvement but it it really changes how we use them how serious is our acceptance of status quo that's where we i said status quo we with them is very difficult to get out from it so here is one uh, you may may enjoy this part that we always criticize that hey english is a funny language we say but and put we don't say put boot and put however we have we never look at our own how we say i have i'm writing in hindi khade ho jao if i ask every one of you then you 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 and you may do it for me i say khade ho jao you may get up but you, you did not follow what i said and this is the way we said khade ho jao or so what it is is khad get up and go khade and go jao so what what we do is we what i ask you to is get up and go but what we do typically just get up we don't go anywhere so khada ho gaya means you, man is getting and gone we you know so our language is very we don't recognize because that's way we been used to it and getting out of this status quo and you something used to is very khada ho gaya hu to khada me standing up gaya gone and still there unbelievable so those three sometimes two three words are there and other word worst one is this one back jao means you sit down and go bad gaya hu sit down gone and you know still there so it's it is amazing what we we never think that way same thing sabji kaato sabji kaat dalo means you trash it we never recognize sabji kaat dali hai cut dump then we still there we never recognize because we are in the sphere we never think what we even say and talk about same thing with the car if you think of it car chalu kar dali hai or if you want to chalu ho gayi hai car started and gone and still there hai so it is our language or way that's way we are used to it that nothing wrong that way we know what it is but the meaning is comes out completely different same thing with the gujarati bhasha we call gavi gujarati bhasha uba thai jao thao ne jao you know same thing i'm going a little faster here uba kari nakhya nakhi di you know else. so you can see shak kapi nakhyu che so it, it kar chalu kari nakhi che chalu thai gayi che sometimes three four verbs are there chalu thai gayi che four verbs and makes it so complicated and lucky na kyu a professor asked hey, paper tame lucky na kyu and the student says yes i wrote in and you asked me to dump it so i dumped it na kyu so anyway glad we don't think the way we say it otherwise we would be in trouble so we barely question our status quo this is the problem in innovation though i explain in a different funny way little in a entertaining way but we never question status quo and that is the biggest blocker one of the biggest blocker of invention and innovation <clears throat> now difference between indian you know food is this this is way because we are used to we often call samosa and all that as junk food and simple curry and roti or curry and puri we call good food but if you think of it this curry and puri if you combine that exactly the samosa but we don't think we we say hey samosa is a junk food we don't eat outside but curry is either puri or roti is the, no different but we don't think that way so status as i trying to explain to you is a status quo is one of the pillars of the innovation and invention what do you see here what you see here is traffic light of course it is a traffic light and it is not a traffic light what traffic light does it does that you know direct the traffic but if you really think of it the function of the traffic light is is a police we don't see traffic light as a police sometimes that's what the our problem we don't see the function or the purpose of the an object or a process so this is traffic light indirectly is a police it stop it does the person's job 
However, this pulley, this when it is traffic light, fortunately it cannot be bright. As they say, necessity is mother of invention. So the idea of rub, pull, tab, you know, the idea of this ring came about while the Ernest Cleon phrase was having a picnic a and then he forgot his can opener. Old days, like those who are of my age, they may remember old days we used to have a, this kind of can opener. We used to puncture a hole on both the side, one side to pour, other side to let air in. And this guy thought, goodness, he forgot one day. And then he thought, he has, this is not the way it should be. This should be simple way to open it. And so he designed and he was a mechanical engineer. And he designed and patented it in 1969. And unbelievable, it's such a simple invention today. Every can a wall would be having this, you know, ring tab open opener. An inventor licensed that technology to give you an example to Coca-Cola in 1970s or something. He was getting one tenth of a British penny per can. And during that period of validity of his patent, the inventor obtained 150,000 by 148,000 US pounds per day in, as a royalty only. He, he became, his asset was in literally in 100 million dollars. So sometimes a simple necessity is a mother of invention and you can see, you know, when somebody needs, the people invent. Now this is also innovation, it may sound funny to you, but hey, this guy has imagine, imagination and creativity and he invent the bucket with the hose to have a shower. This is innovation, it may sound simple, but it is innovation. Now let me ask you how many ways you can use this motor, motorcycle. Obviously, you see this guy is very creative or whoever can, invented that carrier, the person is carrying two babies rather than holding them. It is a little risky, should not be done, but it, still it is an innovation from that point of view. Look at this person. He has, you know, a bike where six person can sit, luggage, even has a food rest and a shed on it. So it is a real innovation. So one has to think how many ways you can use an object or a process. However, this is not an innovation where you carry carry five, ten, five people on a, on a bike. That is not innovation. So in the, we, I believe we are the most creative and innovative people. Look at this person, how he is using his bike to pump you know, water and he, for plowing. Now let me ask you one thing, there is a tree and you want to pluck the leaves or fruits, so would you jump from the road or would you stand on here or on the seat or on the steering? Let's see how this person does it. You see, you look like funny feet. You see, the, it's a goat. Look at this guy. He was jumping on the buffalo and eating it. So the basic, what I'm trying to say, the creativity and innovativeness or innovation are no one's monopoly. Even our animals are creative. Certainly we can be very creative, we are, but we don't think and we don't use our innovation and our creativity. So innovation does not mean the state of the art or state of the technology. So it, it can be anything which is which it, you can use it. If you can use buffalo bicycle, yes, that's an innovation. Now invention and innovation can be a social process as well. It doesn't need to be high tech or material or something. Let me ask you who invented the greatest weapon on the earth. And you won't believe the greatest weapon and really he was an Indian who invented the greatest weapon on the earth and we say hey, we are peaceful people we don't how could we be the greatest invention so we think of the nuclear weapon as an invention so here what you see we can say in Gujarati we call doku or nabhru so actually it is a butt or bat obviously we did not invent bat but you look at who is holding that bat 
that is Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, what did he invent? And how could he invent the greatest weapon? He was not a scientist. So greatest weapon he invented is the way we don't see it, is the non-violence. It's a non-cooperation. And that weapon was so powerful, that he, 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 he the, was a great innovator. He, he, this is not his invention, non-violation, non non-violence, non-cooperation, but he used it effectively. That's innovation. And he called it Sittaka. And he defeated the mightiest, in those days, mightiest empire in the world, that is British Empire. So in innovation does not need to be a material, it could be a process. And what a disruptive weapon he invented. Today it is often misused in our country. Who else used that weapon? And you know it, Mandel, Nelson Mandela in South Africa and Martin Luther King, King in the United States. And you know what a, what a irony. Who got the Nobel Prize? These two people got the Nobel Prize while the innovator was Mahatma Gandhi. Sometimes it happens. Let me ask you and I want you to think. These two great, you know, personality or our leaders, think what they innovated. They really innovated great thing, and what different and unique things they did. I want you to think, and what made them so great leaders. To be leader in anyone, it doesn't matter in politics, society, or science, or technology. One has to think out of the box, be inventive, and be innovative. What is, let me now summarize. This is my last slide. What is invention and innovation? It is seeing what others don't. You have to see everything differently and see, foresee and see it the way it is and thinking what others don't. You have to think differently, you have to think out of the box. Create what others don't. That, that's where innovation comes. Invention and innovation, you have to create. You need creativity. Taking risk to be, to be in business and to be innovation in innovation, you have to manufacture and market and that requires a risk. And so, in a way, so taking risk, which others don't, you need confidence that you, I can do it. So they have the confidence then in themselves, which others lack and making commitment, they make the commitment that I'm going to do it no matter what and they make the commitment which other people don't and that all those what I describe and hear as well it has to be a passion of people, institution and whole country if you do that if it is so then it, people have satisfaction they, they have pride and country has pride and it leads to prosperity Thank you, Jahin. And any questions or comment, I would be happy to answer. I hope you learned something. Uh, thank you so uh, thank much, you Dr. So much, Dr. My pleasure. Anybody having questions, please uh, switch on your microphone and ask, or you can leave the question in the chat box, which I'll read out. So we deliberately planned for interaction session, uh, thinking that uh, participants would like to ask a few questions. Uh, that's why the time span is also more than one hour. So anybody who is willing to ask a question, please unmute and you can proceed to ask the question. Can I, can I come in? Yes, please. Nitin Patel, uh, sir, please. Uh, Gurdanji, uh, it was uh, indeed a very good presentation and uh, we learn a lot out of it. Uh, just I was going through your profile and then your GP labs has uh, contributed uh, in a huge as far as patenting and you have a huge experience of creating a lot of patents at US. So would you uh, share some of your experience that uh, how such organization can be created and uh, how such culture of innovation can be spread among in uh, institutions and how in a long run 
it can be beneficial to country and state what what organization are you with nitin uh, i am with the engineering college uh, uh, teaching undergraduate and postgraduate students and jp labs is the company i started in 1983 and uh, don't want to start my background but i my father was father raised me he would ask me tons of questions you know so he raised me kind of innovative you know thinking out of the box he would ask so many questions and anyway so when i i was working for honeywell and then i always wanted to do so many different things and in in a company you are restricted they tell you they pay you and they ask you to do the work or do certain way and that's why i was doing it for 8 years then because i wanted the freedom to invent innovate and wanted to do whatever explore my my idea so i started this company jp labs and that is one thing i would suggest to everybody that hey if you could do it start your own business it is very risky risky but it is so rewarding that if you are even is very risky and very hard but i have enjoyed every moment of my life since i started a business i have so good peace of mind i have i work hard in a lot of risk but the peace of mind and the satisfaction i have is rare and i explore any idea i want to there is no restriction yes it requires capital and all that and above all it is hard to find creative innovative people who think out of the box and when i find such people i try my best to keep them there now with respect to the you ask me how it can be done in india now as i said first thing your mindset is so much we are in a sphere we are hard to get out from it unless we create a culture people you know to speak and pick people talk to and young people and hey motivate them inspire them reward them and we not only there but you also industry where the new product and new technology that invent or something should be re- rewarded government should support fortunately you are at a time where indian government and gujarat government provide lot of funding if you have new creative ideas but it requires hello tulsi nice to see you young man <laughs> sorry tulsi i might interrupt nitin he is a good friend of mine <laughs> so i i hope nitin i answer your question yes 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 very much thank you very much <laughs> hi tulsi so so we have another question uh, yeah, from harsh wagmaria hello harsh how one inventor can commercialize any invention and how you did it and what is the patent you think was difficult for you i think within the portfolio of the patents you have that's what he meant okay ha uh, our uh, first thing you to do what i do you have to have your own business your freedom you get that idea you know please ask me the question again this uh, satya so that i answer properly yes how one inventor can commercialize any invention and how you did it and what is the patent you think was difficult for you that's the question i think difficult for you within the portfolio you had that's what i meant uh, he meant probably okay very good uh, the way i did it because when i started business in 1983 go us government started a program called small business innovation research where for innovative new ideas government was funding so that my i got millions of dollar 5 6 million dollar from the government as a grant and this is the best time in india where government of india and gujarat government is helping you financially to support because financial support is essential so that is the way i did it and then after past 20 years i have not gone to for funding from government because i had my own products which i had a license it because my i knew my strength was in in, in innovation developing new products and patenting and licensing i never had experience of manufacturing and marketing so i restricted my 
business to inventing and developing new products. Now to answer your question, the most difficult one was the one I decided to go on my own, what I call the technology which I developed by developing product by destruction of nanostructures. Typically when people, when technolo- nanotechnology started in early 90s, I was also tempted to work on nan- we are making nanostructures and finding, understanding properties and finding utilities. And then when I did the search, as I mentioned to you, I do a lot of search and due diligence. I found a unique thing that nobody has done, even thought of it, what you can do by destroying them. That is what I call thinking out of the box. And then I started a product, developing product. I had about 20 different products developed by by destroying nanostructures, metallic nanostructures. So that was the most difficult part because I started on my own, it required a lot of reverse expertise. So to, I think, I hope I answered your question. Yes, I think uh, he listened to the answer and if he has any further, yes, I think, uh, yes sir, thank you so much. That's uh, what he wrote. Uh, and Mayank Kumar has uh, asked one question to share your email address, which I will do after the, uh, with your permission, of course. Sure. I'll do after this uh, uh, webinar. And Anyone one, can help You can give me one second. Uh, I have one question. Yes, sir. Please carry on. Yes. Yeah. Actually, Dr. Gordhan, uh, it's a great pleasure always listening to you. And uh, I have never come across a single person <laughs> superior to you in my view who, has, uh, who is constantly thinking and coming up with new things. My question to you is in context yes, of India and actually you could uh, possibly create a new culture in India, especially in Gujarat. So this question, you see the greatest challenge uh, are essentially two. And uh, one is the individual's own passion, which is individual's internal matter. It has nothing to do with money or anything. So that is one thing. Uh, But the second other important thing is that financial capital, which is required to do experiments and fail and succeed. Now, the question relates with when the first generation entrepreneurs have become successful now in Gujarat and elsewhere in India, and they are already having uh, say, uh, they, may, they may have struggled for building a home and their first car and all that. But now they are sitting on say 10 crore rupees of surplus money, 100 crore and some people even 1000 crore. So this, this particular breed of people, first generation entrepreneur, if they can be, if they can understand the importance of the creation and innovation is Uh, 100 times more important than expansion of their business, then the second generation do not not need to worry about the money at all. So much money is there compared to 30, 40 years ago, but it is not really going into innovation because of that mindset of the first generation entrepreneur who are only thinking about expansion. And the second generation entrepreneur is highly educated because their parents have given good education to them. So how do you, how are you going to try to, because now that, uh, please uh, elaborate on that and make something happen in Gujarat as a role model. My request and question also. By the way, I met Tulsi, what, Tulsi a year ago at Pune? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a good friend of mine and he always give me a hard time by asking hard questions. Anyway, let me, they, I, Five, three, four years ago when Vice Chancellor of my alma mater, Sadar Patel University was here, he said, hey look, he, met, he saw my facility and he said, what can you do for India? I said, hey, I do not know. <laughs> so since then I have been coming every six months, except this Corona period, going visiting universities around and every time I come, I visit at least about five universities give top presentation, lectures on different topics, discuss with all these things what I do uh, in a deep detail. 
yes motivation of the young people is required they need to be educated what is invention thinking out of the box risk associated with it it is not a simple task i try my best i love to do it and i want to do it this is in these years late years of my life if i can do something i would be it would be my real pleasure want to do it and that's why i come every 6 months and with a number of institutes so raising fund is not easy task it has been hard for me as well but then i restricted myself to innovation invention developing new products patenting and licensing not to commercialize when i license these products the comp- the who do do you know license it they give me money and that's how i run my business because i did not want to depend on government not only i did not want to depend on government but i thought let, let me explore i wanted that freedom and that freedom it was essential for me so to motivate one really need to have a good program by government and i would write to satya and would write now to dr sahu that i make the suggestions what to do and uh, tulsi you are also one of them you always come up with good ideas we, we know each other for one year and whatever you could help i would be happy to do my best Well, sir, actually, what I meant was uh, you should inspire the first generation entrepreneurs of Gujarat to begin with, and so that they invest more of their uh, on their second uh, new young people to innovate and create rather than just expand and do trade and business. You know? That is where I think we need to think about. I think your question is valid, but I because I. St- I used to come obviously I come every 2 3 years used to come but then I increased my frequency once over by chancellor came here and that is I really haven't thought of it maybe people in India and this business is yes, there can be a program called university industry or some you know large business small business some some program good cost or somebody can start gujarat government can start and if I can participate and help uh, it would be my pleasure I really haven't thought much to see. Well, thank you, but uh, I hope the Gujarat understands your importance. There are not too, not too many people like you, in my view. Thank you. <laughs> Don't let me walk on the ground. Don't make me taller than I am. Yes, thank you, Tulsi sir, for that question. And we have another question by uh, Sh- Shafiq S. Uh, kindly mention about the patent system in USA. Okay, basically, patent basic principle of patents is the same. Is you have something if you want a patent, it has to be novel, should not be obvious. Those are some basic feature requirements for a patents are the same. However, in each country has its own laws. How you know how patents are granted? In United States, you can patent a life. In India and many other countries, they don't allow to patent a life. it is lot they have made they have streamlined the process so well that you can file the patent it takes time but you you patents usually you get the patent pretty fast and not very restrictive in india i, I have one patent pending that meta fact more patent pending and there are some restrictions and the procedure and protocols are a little bit more different from different from other countries at least from united states but basically the structure is the same that you file if you have some concept or so they give you option to file so called provisional patent where you have one year to improve further and once you once then you doing the after that you have to file a regular patent and you, that gives you additional 18 months to file your patent under pct for for in anywhere in the world which is very expensive but there is no basic difference just is the indian government started patent i forgot year so it is still growing the whole structure is growing you know filing patents and the department of patents must be growing rapidly it requires a good patent examiner patent attorneys and all that so 
there is slight some differences but basically the structure is the same it is more expensive to do in in uh, united states than to, to do it in 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 india it is less expensive uh, i hope I, th- thank you sir yes sir yes sir thank you sir so uh, one more jaydeep chudasma he is asking if you can share the ppt i think we have sure. live on youtube maybe uh, they can watch that uh, if you are willing to share it you can send it to us and i'll send it to the participants i i would be happy to say, hopes do you record this one then you can put put it on youtube or wherever you want to hope you have recorded yes we did we did sir then you have my permission to put it on youtube or any you know wherever you want to it wherever it is right and let people have access to it Sure. Sure. Uh I think Harsh has one more question. Uh do you think patent procedure needs to be improved and if yes then what can be done? Uh he says he has filed one patent and it has been more than a year since published but not yet granted. Ah uh, I tell you what it takes the same thing most of my patents never been granted before 2 years. and most of them are granted after 3 to 4 years so it's not in india but it is everywhere in the world examination of patent is not that easy task because they have to do, do we don't do as an inventor we often do very thorough search as i emphasized that research you know prior art search is very essential and it is everywhere in the world it takes 3 4 3 to 4 years before you get a patent it's not india it's everywhere it takes 6 months to acknowledge <laughs> uh not acknowledge you know what no i mean, they, it, yeah i know that because moment you file they have to acknowledge you know they have to acknowledge no, the receipt no, but the review process is a very long process or oh, review process it in this country also it before you one year even they don't consider if too many patents to people file and there are not that many examiners and they be, being a legal document they have to do very thorough search because if they grant you wrong the claim or broad claim or something you are not entitled to it can create conflict so they have to be very thorough uh, sure i think that answers harsh uh, question and anybody else has question they can switch on their speaker and ask Sure. If if nobody has a question, then I request uh, uh, Miss Digisha Wala to uh, give vote of thanks uh, for the program. Okay, Gordon Bai. Thank you, Prakash. Joining. Right. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, thank you, Satya Ma'am. Thank you, Gordon Patel Sir, for the wonderful session and sharing your uh, uh, wise, vast experience in the IP field. So today is the first day of Navratri. So I would like to uh, sh- uh, means uh, happy Navratri to all. So today's session uh, we have seen uh, various means difference between the invention and innovation with uh, very good examples. given by dr gordon patel sir so how inventions and innovations are interconnected interconnected so inven- innovations uses a number of uh, inventions and in it requires uh, lots of knowledge so uh, we have to learn thinking out of the box for that so i would like to thanks again to dr gordon patel sir i think it's uh, midnight there so thank you so much sir for your valuable time and i would like to thanks our sahu sir for your uh, for his uh, encouragement and support thank you all participant and thank to satya madam vimal for organizing this wonderful uh, webinar thank you sir
Thank you, sir. Nice Thank you so much, sir. Nice meeting you, Dr. Sahu. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody, and uh, please stay tuned. PIC will be organizing series of talks on inventions and patents. Please join us and join the group if you haven't in WhatsApp, so that you get the notification of our next program. Thank you so much, Dr. Patel. Thank you, and Sahu, sir. Thank you. Welcome.